I'm Nina Cook, and thank you so much for joining us today for the Entrepreneurs in a Game podcast. I feel very honoured to welcome a very special guest today, John Corcoran. John, welcome. Thanks for having me, Nina. John is an attorney, writer, and a father, and he's just had um, a baby who's five weeks old as of today. <laughs> And he's also a former Clinton White House writer and speechwriter to the governor of California. And I think there will be a whole different podcast, which I'd love to do with you one day. (laughs) Right. Throughout his career, he's worked in Hollywood, the heart of Silicon Valley, and owned his own boutique law firm in the San Francisco Bay Bay Area, working with small business owners and entrepreneurs. He's been profiled in Forbes and in the books Entrepreneurial You and Stand Out by Dory Clark and A Successful Mistake by Matthew Turner. And his writing has appeared in Forbes, Entrepreneur, Huffington Post, Art of Manliness, and many other publications, blogs, and websites. It's so wonderful to have you here today, and I'm so looking forward to talking to you about your mindset, your inner game that's helped you to achieve the success that you have. Yeah, pleasure to be here. For the viewers who, or the listeners who don't know you so well, how have you managed to get to this stage of your business, and what role has your mindset played? Oh man, you know, it's it's interesting to reflect on it. Um, I think, you know, I was shaped uh, like many of us, like all of us, by my experiences growing up. And one of the pivotal experiences for me growing up was um, when I was a kid, my father actually lost his job a number of different times, three different times. And each time he lost his job, we had to move all the way across the country um, in the United States, which is, you know, significant cultural difference, as you can imagine, 3,000 miles from one side of the country to the other. And um, it, it really had an impact on me because it's not fun moving as a kid, especially in the middle of the school year or before high school or something like that, which I did in both cases. And it really influenced me and it, it taught me to take a look and, and really look at what could I do to control my destiny, my future in order to prevent that from happening. And for me, it became focusing on relationships. It became focusing on, you know, the people who are going to be pivotal, pivotal in my career. And I've just kind of um, tried that, done that over and over again in different industries. In each industry I've been in, I've just taken a look at, okay, who are the people that I can control, I can build relationships with? And that's really what I focused on. As far as my mindset was, it was just delivering value to other people. That's what I focused on rather than focusing on um, my own limitations or focusing on um, what I don't have, which oftentimes I, I have to say, you see people a lot of, a lot of times they, they focus on that. That becomes their fixation because I get emails from people all the time talking about that. They're, they're just thinking very internally on their own limitations. So that's just always been my focus. Brilliant. And my earpiece keeps falling out, but I'll keep putting this in. This is some great stuff in here. There's already loads of stuff I want to pick through. So focus on relationships and the pivotal people in your career. But it's not asking what they can do for you. It's giving value to them. And that is a brilliant thing. And this is something I've heard about, that this is the great way for people to, to create value and to start forming these relationships. Can you... Tell us how you do this, because this is something which sounds yeah. like a great strategy. But how do you actually do that? Yeah, and that's a big one that people struggle over, especially when it comes to building relationship with someone who that you feel like is a lot more advanced than they are, more successful. You know, they've already built a business or they're already very successful in their career. You think like, what can I possibly deliver a value to this person? And a lot of times they're thinking in terms of your own vac- vocation. You're thinking, I'm a coach. How can I coach them? I'm a photographer. How can I take photos of them? When the truth is, when you're building a relationship, you want to start with something honestly, not even related to your vocation. It might be something related to a passion or hobby that they have, or it might be related to their family, or it might be related to an interest that they have or a need that they have with their business at that particular time. You know, and in these days we have an array of sources in order to learn these things. People often say, well, what do I learn what that person needs? Well, social media is an amazing tool. Google is an amazing tool. Just get started there. Learn about the people that you want to connect with and learn the ways that you can deliver value. And then the other objection that people often say is, well, then it feels like I'm stalking that person, right? You know, and that is rarely ever the case. Usually it's the opposite end of the spectrum problem where people are not doing enough in order to learn about a person that they're connecting with, in order to learn about what their needs, wants are, desires, what they, ways in which they can deliver value to them. And it's very, very rare that someone on the other end is going to be like, oh, how does this person 
know this thing about me or or why is this person offering to help me hire a sales professional? No, it's the opposite. People are gonna be like, wow, what an amazing impression that that person made on me because they just went the extra mile of asking how they can help or sending me a resource or a recommendation or something like that. So to answer your question, it doesn't need to be anything huge. And it can be something small, it can be advice or recommendation. It just takes a little bit extra effort in order to, one, figure out what the person you're trying to connect with could need, use, or want. And also to take an extra step just to see how you can help with that. More than just saying, oh, I'll keep you in mind or I'll think about it or something like that. Excellent. So it's just even taking a small step, showing your interest, showing that you understand where they're coming from, what their challenges are, and then offering some help. And if you may not seem like a big deal, but for them, it may be something that feels really significant from you. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't take that much effort these days, right? You know, I mean, it, you can do some research, a lot of research online in order to try and find resources for people. You can ask around within your network or you can just think through your network. Are there people that, you know, that this person could value being connected to? Introductions are a huge one for me. I do that all the time. I'm constantly introducing people because I know, and the, the truth is, that everyone has two people in their network who would really value from getting to know one another. And I've had people start businesses together. I've had people come, you know, strike up great friendships, start podcasts together, all kinds of things from those introductions that I've made. And it absolutely will go back, come back to benefit you if you go out and you take that extra effort in order to do those things. And I, and I imagine it feels hugely satisfying for you as well when you connect two people and they've got something in sure. common and they can run with something. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of our larger clients for our company right now, Verizon 25, is someone who I introduced to someone else who they ended up striking up a great friendship, great partnership, starting a, a very successful podcast together. And they've, you know, been able to support one another and, and uh, drive business to each other's bus businesses, respectively, for, for many years now. So uh, it's really cool to see that. And then it came back around. And then, you know, he thought of us because he thought, I need help with this. And I'm, of course, I'm going to hire the guy who introduced me to the partner who I've been working with for all these years. Yeah, it all makes sense. And so what about, that? you've done that first step, you maybe sent some valuable resource or something. How do you continue that relationship? Because then you almost feel like the ball's in the other person's court and they may not get back in touch with you for a while. How do you keep it going? Yeah, I mean, that happens. And, you know, especially if it, the person on the other end is incredibly busy, has got, you know, a, a company to run, family, all those, you know, everyone has different things that are competing for their attention. You know, I've had guests on my podcast too. I don't expect them to follow up with me. They're busy. They've got thousands of employees working for them, you know? Um, and so it's really on you to follow up with that person and to make sure to deepen that relationship. And, you know, it, it depends on where the person is in the spectrum. You know, I mean, I've had Gary Vaynerchuk who's a well-known speaker, author, entrepreneur on my podcast. I'm not expecting him to follow up with me and I'm not expecting him to come to a meetup I do in my local community if I get together with 10 people for coffee or dinners, I'm not expecting to come to that. You know, but if I continue to deepen a relationship with someone of that caliber of that level, then, you know, in the future, if we have the opportunity, we're crossing paths, we might be at the same conference, I might come up and speak to that, speak to that person, Gary or, or someone else at a conference and reintroduce myself and opportunities might flow from there. Or it might be there, there might be an opportunity that, you know, he's a speaker, for, for example. So maybe there's an opportunity where I can introduce him to someone else to come in for a, spa a paid speaking engagement, which then could lead to opportunities for me. So, you know, it, it depends on the level that the person is at. And it's, it's on you. It's your obligation in order to continue to deepen that relationship. And by necessity, you can't do it with everyone, right? I mean, we meet thousands of people every year. You can't possibly do that for everyone. So you have to prioritize. You have to take an 80-20 approach. You have to decide, okay, who are the higher priority people for my business, for my career, for my vocation, for my goals. And also you have to use higher le leverage type of activities. So it can't always be individual texts, individual emails, individual phone calls. Eventually you have to move towards communicating with people in a one-to-many fashion or maintaining relationships with people with a one-to-many fashion. You can go to coffee one-on-one -on -one forever or you can organize an event where you invite 100 people. That's a lot more effective use of your time. 
What about the mindset behind all of this? What about the thinking? What about the fearful thinking? They're not going to be interested in me. I'm too small. It's scary to do this stuff. Fear of rejection. Sure. What if they don't it come is. back to me? Yeah. All well, of first of all, fears. first of all, no one's, yeah, I mean, no one's going to hate you for trying to deliver value to them. No one's going to like excoriate you for, who are you to recommend a restaurant to me? Or who are you to like, offer to introduce me to someone in, in your network, you know, who ha, for, is formerly a COO and I'm hiring a COO for my company, you know, no, they don't going to react that way. You know, um, at, at worst, you're probably going to not receive a response or it's going to be a delayed response, which is natural from higher caliber people, more successful people. So it comes naturally with the territory, but I wouldn't worry about it if you're, it comes from a place of sincerity. And if it comes with someone who you genuinely connect with, you want to support, then you should you sh you know you should want to do these things and you should realize that you know the person on the other end is you know they're busy and they're not always going to follow up one problem i do see with people is is oftentimes they think well <laughs> this person can't get back to me or you know they're not being responsive or whatever they don't appreciate me or something so it's kind of a form of self sabotage you know like you have to keep powering through you know people are busy you know i so Early in my career, I was an intern in, in the White House, this White House speechwriting office. And I wanted to come back after I graduated from, was still in college at the time, I wanted to graduate from college. I wanted, uh, I had a BA in English when I was 23 years old and I wanted to be a writer in the White House. And I went to a party school. How hard are the chances of that, right? But I maintained touch with the speechwriters there who were incredibly busy. They had a lot on their plate. I didn't get offended when they didn't respond to every email or letter or message that I sent to them. And eventually, because of that communication, they came back to me. One of them came back to me and said, hey, John, I heard about this position. It's a writing position. I know you'd be interested in it. I think you'd be a good fit for it. Told me about it, and I ended up getting the job. You know, So not getting discouraged is really, that, that is a big part of that mindset. Yes, I completely agree. It's not taking it personally when you don't hear back and when you get a no. It's just, it doesn't matter. That was a no. There are plenty more people I can try. And I've used this example before, I know. But when I reach out to people for my podcast, I pick out the people I want to interview who I feel are going to add great value, and I send out emails. So I yeah. sat down one day, I looked at the top 20 online entrepreneurs, and I sent out an email. They don't know me. Please, can I, you know, can I interview yeah. you? I think you'll have great value. I knew most of them would never get back to me. I knew some, some of their PAs would get back to me, say they're too busy. But I had a couple who said, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So I did, and a couple of others actually emailed me back after a few weeks said, sorry, I've only just seen this email and apologized for not getting back to me sooner. Yeah. So you never know when you put stuff out there, what's going to come back to you. And I look at it very much as a game. Let's just play this game of sending out emails, see what yeah. happens. And as you said, it's an 80-20 because most of the people will never get back, but you'll get some really great contacts. Uh, and that's it's, what it's all about. It's just playing the yeah. game, isn't it? It's a numbers game too. I mean, you it's have to put a, yeah, I mean, my sister-in-law, I love her, but I remember when she was in her early 20s, she was looking for a job at, one summer and she like put in an application for one place, a bookstore or something like that, and then waited, you know, <laughs> it's like she was waiting for that one position. You can't do that. You know, you got to put, you got to put out multiple different feelers and some of them will come back. And this never ends, by the way, you know, I mean, I hope no one's watching this and thinking, you know, oh, John and Nina, they got it made now. They don't need to, you know, do any more of this stuff. It continues to this day. And right now I'm writing an article uh, with a, a co-author and we're reaching out to, this is actually, I'm doing this a little bit as a test so that I can report back to others on the results for it. But I'm reaching out only to see level uh, um, executives. So CEOs, CMOs, that sort of COOs, that sort of thing. At employ at companies with over ten thousand employees, ten thousand employees. Okay, and I'm sending out messages to them to to interview them for this particular article, and I I just I'm fully well aware that I'm going to send out hundreds of messages in order to receive a handful of them back. But it doesn't matter because you know yeah. a couple of them is all I'm looking for. You know, and I've already gotten back a couple of them. You know, I've gotten gotten some messages back from people, and I I take a look at them I'm like. Wow, they got like 12,000 employees in this company. How <laughs> yeah, is this person yeah. And it baffles me, you know? I'm like, yeah, yeah. like, I can't believe this person gave it back to me. But you know what? I mean, that's what perseverance does. I mean, per you persevere past. And then you forget about all the rejection. You forget about all the people failing to respond. And, and you know, and you just have that one great connection and it's all worth it. And it's being able to take a no 
and know that a no is just a stepping stone to a yes. And when you stop yeah. taking those personally, it just, it, it's almost like it's a game changer because suddenly yeah. you just have this freedom, this courage, resilience to keep reaching out again and again. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. And, and as yes. you say, you never know who's going yeah, to be and I would encourage you to do something that will test your resolve with regards to no's. So some people, you know, that might be you have a favorite charity and you go and you volunteer to um, participate in a pledge drive and make cold calls to people. Uh, as a kid, I was very involved in politics, you know, in, in uh, my adolescence and in college years. And I went door to door you know, door to door, knocking on doors for candidates, sometimes in very bad neighborhoods. And, you know, you have people that slam the door in your face. You have people who refuse to talk to you. And, you know, it's just dust yourself off, go on to the next place, you know, and that's really what makes a difference is just dusting yourself off, not taking it personally, moving on to the next one. And even doing that in some other area, like that's why I say doing it for like a charity that you care about. Uh, it will steal your resolve and it'll make you realize that, okay, it's not the end of the world if I get rejected and it'll make it easier for you in the business world. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. So for you when, you, when things don't work out for you, how do you handle that? What's your thinking around that? How do you, yeah. how do you get through that bit? Yeah, you got to give yourself a roadmap and you got to focus on putting one fit in front of the other and not dwell on the negativity or the, um, the failure or the setback. So, you know, for me, after I worked at the White House, I went, I wanted to move back to my home state of California. Um, I, at the time, the dot com boom was going on. All my friends were in Silicon Valley, in San Francisco, and working for all these startups. And it was really exciting. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a part of that. And the closest I got was Sacramento which is the state capital for California. And I ended up being a speechwriter for the governor of California at the time. And then up and coming governor, his name was Gray Davis. Three years later, he ended up getting booted out of office in the historic recall election when Arnold Schwarzenegger became the governor. And it was unprecedented. And I was out, you know, I was like, you know, my mid twenties and I was, you know, went from here to here and lost my job and had to find a new job and everything. And I just focused on, what I'd done, which was building the relationships. And I looked at my network, looked at the people I'd worked at, you know, who I'd maintained relationships with. And I was very fortunate that I was basically able to walk out of that experience and walk right into another job. And I had some colleagues who frankly were out of work for six months or more because they hadn't done a great job of building strong relationships with people. And so I credit that to helping me to land on my feet um, after I'd had that experience and, and move on with my life. So that's what I would say is if you have a setback of some sort is, you know, focus on your plan, focus on the relationships with people that know, like, and trust you. Those are the people who are going to be more, most likely to come to your side and be able to, to help you out. No one likes it. You know, we've all experienced those, you know, those experiences where you get an email from someone and it's like, Hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. How you doing? Or I haven't talked to you in a while. So I uh, lost my job and I was wondering if you know of any jobs. And I, part of me feels bad. The other part of me feels like, look, what have you been doing? You know, like you're reaching out to me when you need something now. But, you know, you didn't do any legwork. You didn't put in any effort in order to build that relationship when you didn't need anything. So remember that. That's an important lesson. Yeah, too right. And how, how do you pivot your thinking so it doesn't go, doesn't run into the negative? You know, you don't go into that downward spiral, which can suck a lot of energy right. and time out of your business. How do you yeah. keep yourself pivoted, your thinking right. pivoted to the, you know, to the positive stuff and looking ahead rather than looking right. back and, and right. you know, getting into a stew about stuff? Right, right. I, <clears throat> I mean, I personally, I believe, you know, taking care of yourself is important. Um, exercise is important. As a parent of four kids, I don't do enough of it, but I bike to work. Um, that's how I get my exercise, a bike to work and back. Um, and, you know, putting good things into your body, not uh, drugs and alcohol, um, you know, trying to be, trying to eat healthy. Um, uh, you know, I, a few months, was a year ago or something like that, I started to get into meditation. Um, meditation is amazing. I don't do enough of it. I agree. Uh, but it, it is an amazing way of giving you clarity around your mind and remaining positive. Practicing gratitude is another big one. I have, I've, I made a planner for myself each day. I fill it out 
um, when, I, when I get into the office, uh, like writing down like what my plan is, what I'm going to get accomplished that day, what's on my agenda. And it starts with three things I'm grateful for. Mm-hmm. That's in the top left hand corner. Um, I'm not I didn't invent this. You know, and and many people will say this, but practicing gratitude is just an amazing um, tool for remaining positive. Yeah, and I'm the same. In my morning ritual, I always look at what I'm grateful for and write down what I want to achieve for the day. It's also having a vision, isn't it? And keeping your eye on that rather mm-hmm. than thinking, well, that didn't happen and this didn't happen and that means this and that about me. It's it's keeping that vision in in mind. And that can yes. be quite um, a challenge, can't it? In the day to day, in the day to day, what should I say? Uh, being an entrepreneur, right. day in day out, bringing in business, yeah. serving your clients, doing the marketing, and all of that, it can be quite hard to keep your eye on the ball. It can, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, the other thing I would recommend, and this is a great piece of advice which I got from my friend Kevin Waldron, um, who's a business coach here in the Bay Area. Um, Take the 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 first very small micro step that you can towards achieving those larger goals. So, you know, I remember him giving this example a number of years ago. He had a client who wanted to do a round the world cruise, which just seemed so unfathomable fathomable to her. Um, you know, like it was going to be like many months long. And, you know, it was just this big dream that she harbored, but she never got anywhere closer to it. And he said, well, what is the first small step, smallest step that you can take to move in the direction of achieving that? And she said, well, I guess I could do a little research on, on what are the different options, the prices, the timing when it, when it departs. And just that one small little thing is going to give you that feeling of a little bit of satisfaction. It gives you that, that achievement as you're moving in the direction towards these larger objectives. Um, you know, it's like setting aside five bucks a month in a, you know, or 50 bucks a month or whatever the dollar amount is in, in a separate account that's moving towards, you know, purchase of something, you know, whatever it is, a dream vacation or something like that, that is just going to make you get that feeling of achievement. So I recommend doing something along those lines, just those little micro commitments. And when you take a step, then you can get some, some extra propulsion, can't you? And that can help you start moving up and up. It builds momentum. What would you say to anyone who's listening and watching about how they can start leveraging their thinking? So, you know, they've been thinking a certain way, getting certain results. How can they start thinking bigger so they can start taking bigger action in their business? How can you make that leap from where you are currently to start thinking, actually, I could start, you know, gathering a bigger team around me. I could start, you know, asking for bigger, higher prices. I can start working with a different caliber of client. Right, right. Well, I'm a big uh, proponent of setting goals and breaking down those larger goals into smaller achievable goals. Um, And a lot of people, um, they either set way too large goals, um, or if they set large goals, they don't break them down into uh, certain steps along the way. You know, so I'm a a big fan of Elon Musk, the founder of Tesla and, and PayPal and SpaceX. And look, you know, 15 years ago, he had this vision of reusable rockets and doing 30 launches a year and heading and building a rocket to go to Mars. And that's just such a huge vision that it would never be achieved if you didn't actually break it down to its smaller component parts. And it started with a very small rocket, you know, building that smaller rocket and achieving getting up into orbit. So you, you start with those smaller pieces, or you start with a larger piece, and then you break it down into smaller objectives and then focus on those smaller objectives for, you know, as well. So, you know, you should have a larger vision of a three to five year or preferably a 10 or 25 year vision of where you're going with your career, with your business, and then break it down three to five annual, quarterly, even down to monthly, even down to KPIs, you know, what you should be doing every day. So you wake up in the morning, come in the office, you're like, okay, these are the things that I need to be doing that are going to, help me move in the direction towards, as you said, if you want to build a bigger team around you, okay, what's the first step? Maybe the first step is draw, you know, drawing up a job description, putting that job description on different job boards, putting it on your social media, on your LinkedIn, and then starting to collect all of those results and then looking over the results and seeing who's a good fit. That's, you know, that's a way of kind of breaking down and just taking it into its smaller component parts. 
I like that because it doesn't seem overwhelming, does it? If you look at a big goal, you think, I can never do that. It's just too much. I haven't got time to do that. Yeah. If you break it down to small goals, then you can do it step by step and start seeing progress before you know that you could be halfway there. Exactly. That's exactly. a really great way of doing it. And why why do you think that mindset is, is such a key part of having more success, you know, serving a bigger audience? Um, because the alternative is to either not set big enough goals for yourself or set large goals for yourself and to have no roadmap, have no plan for achieving it. And, you know, just like any journey in a car, you want to go to somewhere, you need a roadmap. And that's what taking the larger vision, the larger goal and breaking down to its component parts, it's, it's, it's sequential steps is it's it's a roadmap for you so um it's critical in order to achieve anything large is to you know, break it down and, and find the smallest steps that you can take i mean when i look back on my career i look back on some of the things that i you know I, the industries that i've penetrated and i've been in the halls of power washington dc and i've worked in entertainment and business in hollywood and i've and i've you know run my own boutiques uh, legal practice law firm in the San Francisco Bay Area, and you know, start an online business and all these things, and they seem unachievable when you start out with them. But the steps that you take early on will lead to them. You know, when I was building, you know, when I was full time practicing law, and I had this vision of I wanted something larger. I wanted to be able to have a bigger impact uh, through a website, through a blog, through a podcast. I didn't know exactly what it would look like, but I knew it would have a bigger impact. I'd be able to affect more people. I'd appear on podcasts and things like that. And it started with just setting up a free WordPress blog and starting to write and sharing my thoughts, you know, and very few people were paying attention at that point. And it was just one step in front of the other, you know, and then when I decided to start a podcast, okay, well, research, how do you do that? How would I get a podcast launched, you know, and then eventually you get better at it. And so, you know, you just break it down, Take, you know, focus on those small little steps and eventually you look back and you realize, wow, a lot, a lot was achieved. Yes. And that's the difference between the people who do become very successful and those people who don't get to the level of success they want because it's keeping doing it, keeping doing it, stay taking one strategy rather than trying to do a hundred things at one go and being consistent with that strategy. And just, okay. you know, because you will eventually start seeing results. It's almost inevitable, isn't it? It is right. If you don't give up. You know, and if you don't try and do too many things at once, too, that's yes. the other thing. Yes, yeah, so know, that's what I keep running into with entrepreneurs. They keep spending too many oh, plates. Yeah. <laughs> too many plates. So they, you know, they, they get an inch forward on a hundred different goals. You know, it's like eliminate all these other goals, focus on one or two, and then find the one that really works and then double down on that. Pour fuel on the fire. No, yes. Do more of that. That's another thing you see entrepreneurs commonly make a mistake of they find something that works and they get bored with it and they stop doing it and then they go to the next challenge oh, i'm gonna try this other thing i'm trying yeah. facebook ads even though i got this other thing that's working you know yeah. it's like okay find the thing that's working continue doubling down on that yes yeah, so and you get better and better and better at it yes absolutely so john how can our viewers and listeners find out more about you and your work Great. Um, this has been a pleasure. So rise25.com. Oh, amazing. I've loved it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Rise25.com is the overarching business from my business partner, Dr. Jeremy Weiss. Um, and you know what we do now is we connect uh, entrepreneurs, we connect business owners with their ideal prospects, referral partners, and strategic partners. And my blog and podcast is called Smart Business Revolution. Um, I've been doing both of them for about 10 years now. So hop on by. Um, Sign up for my email list and and hit reply and say hello and tell me that you heard uh, you heard me through this podcast and I I would uh, I love I always respond to everyone so I love you connecting. Do. Absolutely, yes. I would encourage everyone. We'll put all the links up as well on the show notes. I would encourage everyone to pop over and see what John's doing. He's got some amazing stuff and um, you know you've done you worn so many hats and got so much experience and knowledge and you know I know you love sharing that with as many people as possible. Yes, absolutely. Well, thanks so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. I could talk for a lot longer. And it's a shame that we have to wrap up now. But thank you, everyone, who's been listening and watching. I, I know you've got a ton of value from this. Until next time, bye-bye for now.